everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new weekly vlog. Um, it's Tuesday today, I haven't started this one early um, or on Monday but yesterday was just a bit of a manic day. Um, yesterday morning we got up relatively early for us, like at the moment in lockdown. Uh, we got up, I think the alarm was set for 7.30, we had to take my other half's bike down to the garage, um, that's about half hour away um, and obviously he needed a lift back so I went down with him and uh, we did that. Then when we got back I sorted out all the meal plan and the shopping list and then I went off and did the supermarket shop and then normally I go first thing in the morning to the supermarket but because we did that it all kind of delayed the day and um, I didn't really have a lot of time yesterday. So um, I wanted to talk about my reading plans for the week and give you a little bit of an update on what I have read. I'll be honest, I'm still reading Lake in the Clouds and I think yesterday I maybe read 20 pages, if that. Um, so I'm currently on page 442 of Lake in the Clouds out of 610. So I'm not quite um, at three quarters, but I'm really, really close. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm making progress through this after I finished my pages for Frankly in Love for the day. So myself and Daisy made a buddy reading Frankly in Love by David Yoon this week. And what we've done is we have um, split the book up into seven equal sections, roughly. Uh, we decided to take a week to read it. And if we go ahead, then great. If we have to fall behind a little bit, then it's not a problem. Um, I have, obviously it's Tuesday today, and I have read my pages for Monday and Tuesday already. I got up and read the pages for this first thing this morning. Um, it works out about 58 pages a day, but we're rounding chapters. We've rounded sometimes down and sometimes up chapter wise so that we haven't got anything like left in the middle, any sections like left in the middle of chapters. Um, so I am currently um, 113 pages through this and really enjoying it so far. Um, really enjoying having, having a contemporary on the go, but also having a contemporary that's got some more prevalent themes. So obviously the main character, Frank, is uh, an, a Korean American or American Korean. I don't know which way around you would say it. Uh, his family, his mother and father came over from Korea and um, they settled in the States and um, he was born in the States but um, all these kind of ideologies and kind of rules that his parents have in place regarding who he should date and various other things where he should go to school. It's really interesting to see that unfold throughout the story so far. And 113 pages in and I really feel like we, we know the characters well and um, it's really, I'm really intrigued to see where it goes. I kind of have an idea where I think it might go, but um, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. And um, yeah, I'm I'm intrigued to go a bit further. I said to Daisy May this morning uh, when I'd finished my daily pages because a numpty, me, didn't cancel my alarm, my 7.30 alarm. So I was awake at 7.30 this morning. Um, and I didn't have a massively early night either. Um, so I just got up and read the pages for today. And I said, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and read a bit more of Lake in the Clouds and then if I get the chance to potentially pick this up and maybe read some more of this, maybe read another section and maybe be a day ahead, Daisy May's happy to, if we need to, like if we're both enjoying it, to go ahead as well. Like I'm not leaving her behind or anything, but um, yeah, um, might pick this up again later and read a bit more. I don't know if I'm gonna read, I kind of feel like I can't not read the sections because it's sectioned out all so nicely by the last bit because I ran out of uh, magnetic tabs. But I kind of feel like I can't, I couldn't like not read another whole section if I was to pick it up again. I don't know, is anyone else like that? So yeah, really enjoying this and really what I need, but also really want to just get this finished. If I can get this finished in the next few days and have this done way before the end of the week, I think I'd really just enjoy having that done. Not because of it's a hard slog, but it's just, it's taken me a while to get through it. And sometimes the longer a book takes, the less I enjoy it as I'm reading it, if that makes sense. Nothing don't due to the book, just the fact that it takes me longer to read. So I have got a couple of new books I wanted to show you as well. The last few vlogs haven't had much book hauling in because I haven't really bought many and I've had a couple delivered and I've showed you what I've had delivered but I've actually like I mentioned in last week's vlog I have actually made a few purchases so there might be a few throughout the week that arrive um but I did order through Amazon uh, Girl Woman Other by 
Bernadine Evaristo. Sorry, I couldn't read that back to front on my um, on my screen. Um, this has been a book that I've seen everywhere and had recommended um, with regards to everyone kind of talking about uh, diverse reads and black reads. Uh, this is something that's been uh, recommended very highly to me. Um, and this is, I believe, the story of uh, 12 characters throughout the UK. Uh, so this is Britain as you've never read it. This is Britain as it has never been told. From the top of the country to the bottom, across more than a century of change and growth and struggle and life, Girl, Woman, Other follows 12 very different characters on an entwined journey of discovery. It is future, it is past, it is fiction, it is history. It is a novel about who we are now. I just thought this sounded really, really interesting, and um, Priya mentioned this, I believe, in her um, in her video that she did all about diversity and diverse reads, and um, the way she explained it just sounded so interesting. I think these are women from multiple different backgrounds and multiple different communities as well. It's not just like from one particular place; it's all over the country and, and lots of different uh, people with lots of different origins. So, really looking forward to picking this up soon as well. And uh, like I say, it's a really popular one, and it has got a um, it's shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction 2020, which is pretty good too. So looking forward to uh, getting to this very soon. And then whilst I was in the supermarket yesterday, I went down the book aisle. Um, I was just kind of having a little look at what they did have. I saw a Dilly Court book, which intrigued me. But when I turned it over and read the blurb, it said it was the second book in a blah, blah, blah series. I can't remember what the series was called. So I was kind of like, mm, I don't want to pick that up. Yes, okay, it's quite cheap. It's £4.50, but I don't want to pick that up and then have to try and get hold of the first one. And So I've just left that. And if it's meant to be, it'll be there next week. Uh, but what I did pick up was uh, from that, they've got like a fiction section and they've got like a non more non-fiction section which might have like cookbooks and self-help books and things like that in it at my supermarket. So what I did pick up was Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. Um, this is um, exposing data bias in a world designed for men. So I'm going to read the back to you because this just sounded really interesting to me. Uh, imagine a world where your phone is too big for your hand, your doctor prescribes a drug that is wrong for your body, in a car accident you are 47% more likely to be seriously injured. If any of this sounds familiar, chances are that you're a woman. From government policy and medical research to technology, workplaces and the media, Invisible Women reveals how, in a world largely built for and by men, we are systematically igno ignoring half the population, often with disastrous consequences. Caroline Criado Perez brings together for the first time an impressive range of case studies, stories and new research from across the world that illustrates the hidden ways in which women are forgotten and the profound impact this has on us all. Again, this is an award sticker on it. So this is the Royal Society um, Insight Investment Science Book Prize 2019 winner. So this just sounds really interesting. Um, I'm really trying to broaden uh, fiction versus non-fiction as well in my reading. So not just reading um, fiction from interesting avenues, but also reading non-fiction too. Um, this is something I have heard, uh, I can't remember who it was, but I have heard someone talk about this on a booktube before and thought the interesting, the concept was really interesting. Um, but um, I saw it for £4.50 in the supermarket and thought I'm just going to, just going to snip it just gonna I'm just gonna grab it and um, we're gonna go from there so like I say diversifying my reading is also looking into not just race and culture but also gender as well um so yeah looking forward to getting to this as well and I kind of like I'm quite a nerd so something like this I'll really get my teeth stuck into and really enjoy the the statistics and the case studies and things like that I really enjoy at this sort of thing so yeah this is um going high up on my tbr as well so obviously for the rest of the week i plan to make progress on both frankly in love and lake in the clouds haven't got anything else planned i don't think for the rest of the week so should be able to get through both of those i'd like to think quite easily and then go from there and obviously when i make a decision on my next read I'll let you know because at the moment I don't know what I'm going to pick up next so um, I'll have to let you know. It might be White Fragility because I have started White Fragility and um, I haven't got massively far through it but it might be that. I haven't, it's, I've been reading it on my tablet which I'm filming on so I can't tell you how much progress I've made through it but I might pick that back up 
um, uh, because I've kind of put it down to read Frankly in Love and Lake in the Clouds. Uh, but I might pick that back up to um, to get some more progress made through that. So we'll see and I'll update you as we go. But as things arrive this week and as I make progress, I'll keep you updated. So I've been a really bad blogger and I've like not filmed any clips yet this week and it's Monday now and I need to wrap this vlog up and um, get it edited and posted for you all. So apologies for the way I look, I did get uh, a bit sunburnt yesterday, it doesn't look so bad on camera but I didn't stand out in the sun for that long at all and didn't even realise I'd caught the sun until we got home. We were out on the boat motorbike most of the day yesterday so I kind of got home, took my helmet off and then went oh my god, didn't realise, <laughs> I didn't realise I'd caught the sun as much. Um, so yeah, um, apologies for this, apologies for a little bit more of a relaxed background but I thought I'd sit in my bed today rather than go into the other room and set all that up. So um, here I am to kind of talk about my reading this week. I kind of feel like because I was buddy reading uh, Frankly in Love this week with Daisy May, I kind of feel like because I was talking to her every day or, or two, um, I kind of felt like I was updating her so I kind of forgot to make a point of updating the vlog and talking about my progress how far I was through yada 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 um but I did finish this yesterday Sunday uh and I really really enjoyed this um I only caught I only got behind on one day I think Saturday I didn't quite get my pages read um we had a bit of a busy week to be honest which is probably another reason why I haven't done any other updates uh, this week we just I feel like we've been and done everything this week and been here there and everywhere um obviously sticking to all the social distancing and all the guidelines and everything but um I just feel like it's been a really busy week um so I didn't I didn't uh, read all of Saturday's pages until we got home on Saturday and I kind of got into bed in the evening and um, I started reading and I was so close to finishing Saturday's section but I just couldn't keep my eyes open. It wasn't going in and retaining the information so I just decided to put it down and then uh, we went for a long bike ride like I said yesterday out on the motorbike. When we got home from that in the afternoon I um, made a point of sitting down and just reading it and I think I probably read it in one sitting just, just blitzed through the end and it it was such a good ending. I really like sometimes books that maybe have a bit more of an unclear ending or um, not a concise, clear cut end. Uh, it can sometimes um, it, it can sometimes like wind me up and I get a little bit annoyed about it. But I actually really enjoyed that this was it had an end and it kind of it felt. But it was like obviously it's not the end of this person's life so it, I don't know just felt like right for the book the way it ended and uh, it was just such such an interesting read really interesting themes um the idea that these people these Korean people living in America kind of all sticking together but maybe not everything is quite as it seems um and that maybe some of the ideas aren't and ideals that were put onto Frank maybe weren't weren't right and characters grew and developed and learned and that was just really interesting. Uh, Daisy May still hasn't finished, uh, she's got a little bit left to read uh, today. Uh, I can't wait to have a chat with her once she's done and talk about it all in depth, the ending and how everything kind of came together at the end because really looking forward to discussing it with her but it's such a good book that we've read. We both said how much we've enjoyed it. It was really nice uh, reading this alongside um, Lake in the Clouds, this being quite a heavy historical fiction. Uh, having this as a contemporary even though it has some more kind of like um, important themes to it and it's not like a, a fluffy contemporary um, it still felt like it read really quite easy and it was accessible to read um, so that it did I'd never felt bogged down throughout the week of trying to make progress through this and um, you know and get this read in the week so yeah thoroughly enjoyed this and um, really glad we picked it up I don't know why I haven't picked it up sooner but I'm really glad that I didn't because otherwise I wouldn't have had the experience of reading it with Daisy May so yeah can't wait to have a conversation with her a little bit later on once she's finished and uh, natter about this um, I did finish uh, Lake in the Clouds finally um, I don't really know what's happened with this I just think last week um i didn't quite make as much progress through it as i thought i would i thought i'd finish it in the first week it's kind of been how my reading's been going but i think with just various things going on in the world and um just my headspace and feeling busier um i feel like i just struggled to get through this but i do feel like the last quarter um really really flew and everything kind of started coming together and i i really got back into it i feel like i kind of towards the middle maybe was in a bit of a lull with it and not that i was disinterested but just i was finding it 
uh, finding I'd rather pick, do, pick something else up and do something else than read this, which is a shame, but it does not detract from the fact that I really, really enjoyed the book. And I think my enjoyment or my feelings whilst reading it are all down to me in the sense of feeling like it took longer, wasn't in interacting, feeling like I was like, um, feeling like I wasn't engaging with the story. I think that was all me. It wasn't the book at all. It was just where I was at with my head. Uh, but I finally read this, finished it, and it was so good. It was worth every day I spent reading it. I mean, it took me two weeks to finish it and uh, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed where the story's gone. Really enjoyed seeing some of the characters develop. Like I mentioned before, this book is actually set eight years after the first two books. So it was really interesting seeing some of the characters that you get to know in the first two um, you know, are significantly older and wiser and um, seeing their characters grow has been really interesting. Uh, we've we've got some a character in this uh, that's quite an important character that was a child when we first met her, but she's now like 18 and she's an adult and she's, you know, she's trying to build a career for herself and, a, um, and it's just, it's so, so good. And some babies from the last book, you know, are now growing up and, and they're like eight, nine years old. And, and that's like really interesting as well. I did have a look at the next book in the series, which I think is called Far Along the Sky. Um, I've got them all sat on a shelf over there. And um, I just wanted to see how many pages it was and see if there's any chance of me getting it in this month uh, to read it. And I think they do a time jump again, uh, which is really interesting. So I can't wait to pick that up at some point. Don't know if that's going to be this month because this month's reading isn't really going to plan. I'm on the, what day is it? So the 15th, so I'm halfway through the month today. And... Um, I've only finished two books, but it's not the end of the world. I'm going to pull the cat out of the bag, I'm sure, and I'm going to get some more reading done. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed this and so, so glad I've made more progress through the series. So yesterday afternoon, after I finished Frankly in Love, I still had a bit of free time and could have probably just sat on Animal Crossing or scrolled on my phone or caught up with some YouTube videos. But I actually decided to make some progress through the Switch. Um, so I picked the Switch up and started it. I kind of didn't know what to read next and I thought well I'm just going to pick this up because it is on my kind of loose TBR for this month. Um, I enjoyed having a contemporary like Frankly in Love and I thought this would just be a nice break. After having Lake in the Clouds take me two weeks to read I know this is going to take me hardly any time. So yesterday I read up to page 71. Uh, let me just find it. So yeah Yesterday I read up to page 71. I haven't spent that much time reading it today and I'm already on page 130. So I kind of feel like I'm nearly halfway through it already and I feel like I could probably finish this tomorrow potentially. So that would be Tuesday. So we'll see. It was, just, it was nice to pick this up yesterday afternoon and just kind of blitz through 70 pages and it feel like nothing, yet still feel like you're immersed in the story and you're intrigued with the characters and stuff but it was effortless to read. So uh, I've loved the flat share. So I was really looking forward to picking this up and I took the plunge. I don't quite know what the rest of my TBR is gonna look like for the rest of the month now, but I'll update that in next week's weekly reading blog and uh, we'll see what I pick up uh, going forward for the rest of the month. Uh, but I did also just want to say, I did have a couple of books delivered as well. So I thought I'd touch on those. Um, Daisy May actually very kindly gifted me uh, this book, uh, P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Rahern. I was talking to her about, I think I mentioned it actually in a vlog and then she messaged me and said, did you actually end up buying P.S. I Love You? Because I was talking about potentially reading this because I have the audiobook and maybe buying it on my Kindle and, and following along and making progress through this so that I can read the second book postscript that was recently released. I read this so long ago that I feel like I have to reread it and then I can't make progress and get postscript read until I've read this. So then it kind of effectively does get a book off my TBR even though this is a reread for me. Uh, but she very kindly gifted it to me and there's a lovely note in here that said thank you for your amazing videos. I really hope you enjoy reading this again from Daisy May. So it was really 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 lovely of Daisy to do that and she really didn't have to and she really has to stop buying me things now because uh, last week it was a uh, magnetic bookmarks this week it was ps i love you um so thank you so much i am really really grateful for this and then i did buy these two myself um i used uh, i used a waterstones gift card to purchase these um waterstones one of the only places that i could actually get why i'm no longer talking to white people about race uh by rinnie edo lodge um it was one of the only places i could actually get it that 
would dispatch it quite relatively quickly. Um, I think um, it was actually significantly smaller. I thought it was going to be a bigger book, um, but I'm intrigued. Apparently there is a, a new chapter in this called Aftermath. I was playing Animal Crossing with Lorna, uh, book lover Lorna, um, and uh, yeah, last night, Sunday night, I was playing and she said she's got this as well. And she was uh, surprised about... Um, how small it was but she said there's a new chapter in it um which i think was the delay and i think the new chapter um to do with um maybe more current um issues uh that have come to light um so i'm intrigued to get this read it's not very big so i'm hoping i can get to this relatively soon um i have a waterstones gift card did i say that um so it was good to be able to order it through there as well because i was able to use my gift card and uh, it's one that i definitely really want to make a priority to read uh would like to read this this month um before the month's out uh, but then i also decided to bump up my um order so that i could get free postage but the books arrived separately so waterstones like what was the point because you sent it in two separate deliveries i don't mind i've not paid for the postage but it seems a little bit silly i actually bought come tumbling down by shannon mcguire which is the i think the current final book in the wayward children series that's published um i just thought i would make the most of making the order it's a book that i wanted it's a book that i need to kind of round out a series so far published so i thought i'd go ahead and order it again i was using the um the gift card so it kind of feels like free money it's like a feels like a, a free gift almost so I, I wasn't too um I wasn't too bothered about purchasing this uh I wasn't worried about spending the monies because it kind of wasn't money these are really expensive these books and I feel like the rest of them are going to be like if I don't know how many more are due to be published but I think they will be wish list books and special occasion books that I ask for for birthdays and Christmases and stuff because they are so expensive for what they are they're so small but I really enjoy them so yes yeah, so I had a few books delivered which was quite nice uh, and obviously there's a few books I think in the clip before that I picked up um so yeah I hope you enjoyed this vlog I'm sorry that it's not wasn't much to it um and I'm I'm sorry that I haven't just been a little bit more organized I still don't know when I'm going back to work as of what date is it the 15th um of June I still don't know when I'm going back to work so um I still don't really know where my reading is going to go this month um and I'm kind of annoyed that it's taken me two weeks of the month to read two books but I'm hoping that the switch can get me going I hope I can read that in the next couple of days and then I can proper get going with some more reads and getting some more diverse reads in as well and hopefully that will mean that I get a decent number for this month because I've been averaging about 10 books a month since I've been on lockdown. So uh, it'd be nice for this month to be a similar number, but it's not the end of the world if it's not, but hey ho. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like. Uh, and if you haven't um, subscribed already, please, uh, please do so. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear about what you've been up to this week, what you've been reading. Have you picked up any of the books that I've picked up this week? Or have you read any of the books that I've read? I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. So thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.